Hello everyone. The title of today's episode is Communicate with Time and Space. Mr. Within would like to talk about the importance of the human experience to utilize its conscious life in the sense that it becomes its inspiration to explore its unconscious. And what that means is you have lived in a certain way, you have seen certain views and you have walked. You are a beloved human being and you are also part of this beloved existence. As you introduce yourself in your exploration and search of your unknown, you begin to see you are breaking the ideas that were covering the lack of intensity that was your savior. Because we need certain intensities. I did not understand this at first and the way I was raised was a uh, my reality did not had not roughened me up a bit even though I was very depressed but I, I had not even experienced a bit of the roughness of this world but you begin to see roughness uh, also exists in regards to how it is caused in regards to how man thinks the thought of man has kept man up more than his projects and assignments because we question existence to learn from it but in that questioning, we forget that we are projecting realities of a cause and effect modality and where duality is projected simply because of the choice to see an individuality. As the focus of the camera changes, the intelligence of the uh, lens suggests the light that is present. So you must see that there is many senses of existential intelligence that are even holding these cycles in which astrology holds to understand itself. We must begin to see reality is more than contemplations of blind men who are praying to see. Subjected to no regulation, theories were not the answer. Uh, we exist beyond the frameworks of solitary confinement in regards to a solid form. Many people are still wondering if they're going to be in emptiness. And it's important to be aware of it in that way, but you must also work the, with the greatest phenomena. What that means is your efficiency is in how accurately you actualize uh, your greatest vision into experience. If you have a vision, if you want to do something here, you go and do it straight away. There is an intensity in who you are, and you will find this. It is like the wind of war. Uh, uh, wind of uh, the formless wind moving all form it is profound there is a sacredness within you that has always carried you you must just let it dance here that is why be playful because playfulness for some may have seemed to be a bit foolish in a world where everybody had to uh, very seriously act when you begin to see playfulness was the development of a higher state of consciousness for the being who understood that this world was present in a compassionate uh, resonance it's it's here the peace is internally found to be omniscient and so externality is just a choice of behavior your task is to most naturally and most authentically just be in this world sincerely present to yourself do not lie for lying is creating simultaneous realities when simultaneous reality is not even being explored you're playing with toys when man must uh, run into the wild and find tools in which consciousness technologies have been the knowledge of his birthright. Now, Now regardless of any solid path, it is very important to perceive. And as one perceives, they begin to understand uh, a quality where in your imagination you suddenly see, okay, this aspect of me observing imagination is not coming from me. It's as if you're, you suddenly you've walked into a forest, the scenery is there from before. And in your subtler planes, you will discover this phenomena, but you will begin to see it can immediately be changed to yours. So it's as if in your subtler planes, you must be aware of how to walk. Man does not uh, know how to think, for he's still calling it thinking. He must become aware of his subtler planes and consciously build 
build uh, linear realities of trust to then enhance non-linearity in that projection. And so man must utilize the geometry of all branches of knowledge. We must integrate, we must see that the world is one through the vision that is present. Do not judge your brother in regards to how he is uh, shaped, how he looks, for we're all brothers in existence. We're all the sisters of dawn. We must see that this world was not here to take you away, but is here to carry you to the next one. <laughs> and you will see that fear never freed a man, but taught him how to break his chains. We have very profound imagery. Every normal, simple thing you do consciously in your life, it could be picking up your keys from the table, it could be sitting by a stream, it could be listening to birds chirp while you're biking, it could be many things. And you begin to see all of these come to the one significance and how the moment of the being is the portal to all manifestation. The mystic is taking the existential responsibility to explore himself beyond his idea. And that is why he does not fear ideology. He does not think that things can happen to him he does not, uh, which have not come yet. Depression and stress show that the mind is creative and able to create many scenarios of stress. But at the same time, its attention is on the wrong thing. What that means is you begin to see many people who are angry, stressed, or who are suffering or in positions of uh, lack. They are seeing that their intentions are clear. And what that means is if they were given an ability to be in a good scene, their intention could go. They had seen enough reality to know that they would deserve a good one if they had lived a just life. But man is kept by his world for a reason. Whatever state of being, whatever projection of reality, whatever kind of world you're living in, guys, take the existential responsibility. Understand that the reason life is treating you this way is because you are treating it in a certain manner. And this does not mean that you should suddenly go think, oh gosh, what am I doing wrong? What am I right? You can go find uh, uh, libraries of self-help books which are, in a sense, meaningless because all you need is an existential mirror. And the greatest existential mirror is the silence and stillness of being found when you find yourself in the simplicity of the natural world, in the simplicity of nature. Because nature didn't need to teach and there never was a student. It was omnipresently just here knowing, you know. <laughs> nature was never late for class. Nature was never late for work. Its work was being done. Its tutelage was naturally being carried. And while you will see, you must, uh, your ideas are giving you many proximities, uh, proximities of dissolving into emptiness. And this emptiness is a profundity of acknowledging your sense of space and time here more. What that means is that moment when you're suddenly gone into a moment of stillness and silence and it's kind of that emptiness where there's a clarity because you're aware of nothing in regards to no thing. The peace was never in pieces. Catalyzed by self-inquiry, you are taken to your greatest confrontation and the illusion collapses for direct experience is the longing of the reunion which will be reached. Sincerely have the intent to know yourself profoundly and authentically and very great worlds of opportunity and flows will open up to you. And these opportunities, the most beautiful thing about them is they are conditionless. They are, they are not based on condition. They are opportunities where there are inspirations out of space and time. What that means is there have been certain moments where I've read certain poetic texts and just certain imagery in the poetry has been just uh, uh, a moment of absolute reality for me. You know? In just a single moment, it was in an instant, just in an instant, I immediately had to come back because I had work to do later. You know? <laughs> but it's very important. Man is always basking in his infinite nature. But this infinite nature, if it is based on form, it will break into the self-reflective uh, hollowness of the individual. 
But if untouched, it is holistic. What that means is if you do not judge your world, you will see the beauty that is here already. You're not trying to create a new sense of peace. You're trying to see the peace the world is already uh, in. You walk in a peaceful world. Hate was the ignorance of those who could not hear well. <laughs> we act clear. It doesn't matter how how much these people believe in that idea and that idea or these people are doing this action, this action. If you innately just see that your alignment is based on your truth, your truth is clarity because you don't want to waste your time with lies and you realize you're not really wasting your time. You know, The lie is the have to be certain way view of something <laughs> because there's many ways that we can view things and even certain views and certain solid paths integrate into more of a fluid opening. For the river never fell once it knew it was the ocean. For every moment of its being, it was being led there. Every moment of your being as an individual, as you communicate, as you live authentically, sincerely, and open, in a very open manner, this drop consciousness is going into, not immediately an ocean. Don't think you're going to suddenly enlighten as you're going to become into the ocean. That is not actualized and real, and the culture of man needs to still develop certain pillars before uh, such a, a platform can be, in a sense, uh, 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 presented the clarity you find in how an idea is more than you suggests you are more than the idea a profound existential I don't know will give you an opportunity to make a new choice in a new moment in a new response of clarity. Many people think suffering might be giving them a very not, not a comfortable external ride, but it is giving them internal clarity. It is taking them to the actual actuality and, and real experience of the system. And so as the head hits the curve, man also realized he has he was the one who made this curve. Because when Mr. Within speaks, he's speaking to the human species. He's speaking to humanity. And in the freedom of who you have always been, do not hinder yourself with who you thought you were. The present moment's voice is beyond the thought which we think that we are a certain somebody. The only reason we are even comfortable using our names is because people are calling us by it, where it's being utilized. Because if sound is not utilized, there is a man will dissolve into, I don't want to say vibrations, but the beauty of this world will find every heart. And as it does, through a transcendental glance your breath was beyond man much blessings and namaste